that it's my great pleasure to share with you some information about our program. Uh, so this is Sonia. I'm the program director for the MSc program, a uh, Master of Science and a PGD postgraduate diploma program in global supply chain management. Uh, today is my great pleasure to see all of you here and to share with you some information about our program. So. Okay. Uh, so actually supply chain management issues has been under the spotlight for many times ever since the start of the pandemic. We see a lot of disruptions uh, starting from the, let's say, the, shut, uh, the, the lockdown of Wuhan and then later on uh, the other major cities in mainland. And uh, later on, we also have the war between Russia and uh, Ukraine and the trade war between US and uh, and China. And the, all these issues, they create a ripple effect throughout the global supply chain and uh, create a lot of troubles for the business world. Uh, actually, supply chain disruptions is not just because of the pandemic. Uh, on average, companies experience a disruption one to two months in duration every 3.7 years. So nowadays, we just realize the disruptions, they are so frequent that they can create so much trouble in our business world. So a lot of people start looking into those issues. And another thing we observed uh, during the pandemic is that Another thing we, we we observed during the pandemic is that the customers they are really changing very fast. So during the COVID nineteen pandemic, we have seventy seven percent of U.S. consumers into the stores, brands, or the way they shop. So when the customers they are changing so fast, we have to have a very responsive, agile supply chain in order to follow the change in the changing in the consumer behaviors. So that's another challenge faced by the supply chain. Uh, but among all the trends, there's one thing that is clear. It is the ESG initiatives. Uh, customers, they now, they are more likely to buy products with the ESG hat. So we have a survey of those top managers Seven of the nine from the environmental social government initiatives, the ESG initiatives, they have significant supply chain components. So there's another thing we need to change in the supply chain. We need to change our supply chain to cater for the ESG initiatives. So all those issues actually result in the paradigm shift in the supply chain management. And then here is uh report from my team. It says that before the supply chain mainly focused on three areas. Uh, the first one is the cost and the capital, which just the cost we pay for the supply chain operations and the, the profit we generate in this process. And the quality that is the quality of the product and the final services we deliver to our other customers. And we also have the service, that is the service of the provided by the supply chain, for example, the lead time, the fill rate, so on and so forth. That was the focus of the traditional supply chain. Now, because of all those issues we have observed, we have to change our supply chain focuses. So besides the original focus of cost and capital, quality and service, now we need to focus on three new areas. The first one is resilience. It's mainly about the disruptions we have seen during the pandemic. 
is how we should respond to all those disruptions and how can we recover from the disruptions. That's the re re resiliency issue we have to address in the supply chain. And the second is agility. It's mainly about the changing trends for our customers. As the customer needs, they are changing so fast, we need to follow that. And that means we need to be really agile in the entire supply chain process. And then the last issue is about the sustainability. That is closely associated with the ESG initiatives. We need to do things in a sustainable way to cater for the needs of the society, for the environment. That's that's the new areas we need to focus on in the supply chain management. So generally speaking, there's a huge shift in the supply chain management. That's why we need a lot of talents in this area. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, Business Week already published an article. It says that forget the finance. Supply chain management is a pandemic era's must-have MBA degrees. And uh, earlier this year, we say that LinkedIn actually also published an article saying that there's a shortage for supply chain talent. And uh, the data from LinkedIn is made available through Financial Times. And uh, this picture, we see that the number of supply chain manager job postings on LinkedIn, they increased significantly during the past years. So if we normalize to the number of posts of 2018 to one, then in 2022, we say that the number increased to 2.7 in the United States and it increased to And it increased to it increased to one point two point three in the UK. So we see there's a lot of job opportunities going on. Uh, that's why we say that it could be a good time to study the discipline of supply chain management. Uh, now I hope I give you an idea about the supply chain management and why we should study this discipline. And the next question is, why should we choose PolyU to study supply chain management? Uh, we are a world leading university. We are ranked 65 according to the QS World University rankings. And we are ranked 79 according to the Times Higher Education ranking. Uh, in Asia, we are ranked 26 by QS and 14 by the Times Higher Education. This program is hosted by the PolyU Business School. We are also a world leading business school. We are ranked number four according to the Shanghai ranking in the subject management. We are ranked 27 according to the Times Higher Education. Uh, actually, in the subject of business and economics, actually, we are the best in Hong Kong. And uh, for QS, we are ranked 48 in business and management studies. Our business school, we are also accredited by ASSB and AQUES. And uh, the program is offered by the Department of Logistics and Maritime Studies. And in our department, we have mainly two research areas. Uh, the first one is the supply chain and operations management. And then the second one is shipping maritime transportation studies. And the, the second area, shipping maritime studies, is mainly about the shipping and the transport logistics. Uh, we are doing very well in this research area, but in this session, our focus is the first area, supply chain and operations management, because our program definitely falls under the first research area, supply chain and operations management. We are ranked number one according to the Korea University Business School ranking uh, in the field of operations management and management science. Uh, we are also ranked number 11 in the supply chain management journalist. It's mainly about our empirical studies research in the field of supply chain management. Uh, we are ranked number 13 according to the UTD uh, business school ranking based on the publications 
uh, in the top tier journals in the field of production and operations management. So generally speaking, we are doing very well in the research of this field of global supply chain management. And uh, for this particular program, we are ranked 22 worldwide and the number three in Asia, according to the QS Business Masters ranking 23 in the field of supply chain management. We got a lot of faculty members from the top universities uh, throughout the world. Uh, just a few examples, MIT, Cambridge, Columbia, Duke, and so on and so forth. And uh, another measurement for the research capability of the department is the placement of our PhD students. We have our PhD students placed in many top universities in mainland, like Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Tsinghua, and we also have uh, students placed overseas, like the University of Liverpool and the Nanyang Technological University. So it's just another way to show you guys that we are doing really well in our research. And now let's move on to our program. The aim of our program is to equip the, the executives with the capacity to create and sustain competitiveness in supply chain. So we not only focus on the three traditional areas for supply chain management, that is cost, uh, quality, and service. We also cater for the needs in the emerging areas like the awareness, agility, and the sustainability. And we are the first master program in supply chain management offered in Hong Kong. So we had a lot of uh, alumni network in different industries in Hong Kong, and we got a very good reputation in the industry. Uh, our students will get the broad knowledge and the skills in global supply chain management, and uh, we offer a lot of subjects so that our students could get the knowledge and the capability to understand and analyze the supply chain management issues. Uh, our students will be aware of the global supply chain management environment and the corresponding issues. And we also offer a lot of subjects related to procurement, sourcing, purchasing. Uh, our program is accredited by many professional bodies. Uh, the first one here is the six, the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and the Supply. Uh, so students, if they complete our program, uh, and if they if fulfill this kind of requirement for the subjects, they should be able to get the uh, membership of SIPs if they have three years uh, related work experience. And uh, we are also accredited by the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport in Hong Kong. Our students can get exempted from the qualifying exams, and uh, our students can also get the membership of IPS Hong Kong Institute of Purchasing and Supply of Hong Kong. Uh, for the program, the program is offered in mixed mode. So it means that the students they can choose to uh, to study either full time or part time. For full time students, uh, normally they should finish the program in one point five years, and for the part time students, they can spend two and a half years with us. Uh, so this is the normal study period. Once the student finish all the requirements for graduation, they can also choose to graduate early. Um, that's about the length of the study period. Uh, another thing is because we have our part-time students, they work during the day and they can only come to study during the evening or during the night. That's why we, during the evening or the weekend, that's why we offer evening classes per week to cater for the needs of our part-time students. Uh, here is the requirement for graduation. Uh, for MSc students, they need to finish 10 subjects, that is 30 credits. And for PGD students, they finish six cre uh, subjects, that is 18 credits. 
So both MSc and the PGD students, they needed to complete the compulsory subjects and the restricted elective subjects. Uh, the compulsory subjects, they are the supply chain management, international logistics systems, operations and the management, which focus on operations and the global sourcing and the supply which focuses on procurement. And for the restricted elective subjects, we also have three focuses. The first one is operations, the second one procurement, and the last one is information technology. Uh, our students, they need to choose one subject from each of the three categories. So we want our students to have an uh, overall idea about the supply chain management and how it fit into the overall picture of operations. And uh, I want, we want them to develop the strengths in procurement. And uh, for the MSC students, they still need to take four more subjects as three electives. We offer a lot of choices here, uh, starting from basic accounting, uh, aviation, uh, airport, uh, air, air transport, logistics, link practices, project management, uh, further courses in procurement like supplier development, risk management, statistics, decision making, quality management, uh, further subjects in information technology like the ERP and the Python programming and uh, other techniques like the business analytics. So students can based on their interest and their plan for their future career to choose which subjects they can, they can focus on from the list of free electives. Uh, to give you a better idea about our program, here I would like to show you the student profile of our current students. The 2023-24 intake, the students joined us in the September. Uh, we see that there are some students, well, here is the intake by row. It shows us their work experiences. And we see that there are two about uh, well, 8% others and 17% intense. Basically, those twenty-five percent uh, students they are mainly the fresh graduates. Uh, it also means that the other students, seventy-five percent of our current students, they already get some industrial experiences before they join us. Actually, some of them they already got years of work experiences. Uh, uh, seventy per three, uh, thirty three, thirty seven percent of them they are already managers or assistant managers at the time when they started their study at PolyU, and there are also uh, executives, officers, founder of a company, director of the company, some specialist at the time when they join us. So we got the students, they have rich industrial experiences and uh, it offer uh, great opportunities for the students to learn from each other. And uh, here is the intake by sector, it's uh, different industries our students they have worked in. The others, 15%, they are mainly those fresh graduates. And uh, we can also see that our students come from a very diversified background. Uh, they work in banking and finance, engineering, IT, logistics, manufacturing, merchandising, and trading. Again, with students from diversified background, they can also get a different perspectives on the supply chain management. It offer a great opportunities for students to learn from each other. Uh, here are the placements for our recent graduates. Many of them, they find the very good jobs in the top companies in the industry. So we have students working in finance and uh, consulting, uh, logistics and the transportation, manufacturing here, the IT and the communication. Uh, there are also students working with the utility companies and the uh, public services, and then here there are students working in the consumer good industry. Uh, we also have students work for the public sector, like the hospital authority in Hong Kong, and the, the West Kowloon Cultural Center. Uh, that's the student placement. 
And here we have a sharing from Holly. Uh, Holly actually has been working in a top international career company for five years before she joined us. And uh, she said that she gained a lot to this program. So first, the program provided her the opportunity to expand the horizon through both knowledge and the network. Uh, she get insights into different sectors, into such as shipping, logistics, management, and the planning. And the pro professors are passionate, classmates, they are experienced. So they offer a great opportunities to learn from each other. And uh, the program is also very practical. What you learn from the classroom can be applied in the working life. And uh, after completing the program, uh, there are some opportunities to, to get a progress into some management positions in, the, in her future career. Uh, so generally speaking, she would strongly recommend this program to, to, the, to whoever working in this industry. And uh, it will be a great opportunity a very enjoyable experience for us to study in this program. So that's about the program. And uh, now let's talk about the entrance requirement. We require a bachelor's degree in a business related discipline or something equivalent. Uh, but uh, indeed, we still have many applicants. Uh, they don't have a business degree. Uh, in that case, we prefer them to have some relevant work experience or some relevant background knowledge. Uh, for those applicants in senior management positions, uh, if they don't have the bachelor's degree, we will also consider their application on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we prefer students, applicants with working experiences, but still we, uh, we admit students, uh, fresh graduates. So it really depends on the overall profile of the student. Uh, for those, because we teach in English, so for those applicants, they are not native speakers of English, or their bachelor's degree is not awarded by an institution teaching in English. In that case, they need to meet the minimal requirement of English set by the university. So we have the uh, requirement for either TOEFL or IELTS, and for Taiwanese applicants, we accept the CPT exam. And uh, here's our tuition fee. Uh, for MSC, it's 270K Hong Kong dollars, and for PDB, it's 162K. Uh, our program has quite a few subjects, if I remember correctly. We have 10 subjects included in the list of the reimbursable courses for CEF continuing education fund. So if you are a Hong Kong citizen or someone in your family is paying tax in Hong Kong, you can get a part of the tuition reimbursed through this continuing education fund. Uh, we also offer scholarship to those excellent, very good uh, applicants with either outstanding academic or long academic performance. So it could be the uh, academic background or it also could depend on the work experience. We offer the merit-based scholarship for, for five recipients and each recipient will get 50K Hong Kong dollars. It's almost one-fifth of the tuition. So that's the general information I'd like to share with you today. And that's where we have the contacts of myself uh, and our faculty program director, Professor Amanda Wong. So if you have any questions regarding the academic matters, please feel free to reach out to us. 
And uh, for program administration, we have Ms. Priscilla Choi here, and, uh, and her contacts. You can always reach out to her if you have any questions regarding to the program administration. Uh, we have our website for our department. You can get more information about our department uh, from the website. And uh, we have our online application through the online platform offered by the University of Tali U. Our application deadline actually will be April 30 next year. Uh, it seems like there's a long time to go, but uh, because we are admitting students on a rolling basis, so basically we receive some applications, we are going to review them and make some decisions. So uh, it's always encouraged to apply early. Uh, that's the general information I'd like to share with you today. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, so if you have, well, if you have, don't have any general question, uh, that will be great. And uh, it will be great if I can see you next year here in Poly U, our program. Uh, you are always encouraged to apply for our program. If you have any further questions, uh, you should feel free to reach out to us. And uh, if there's anything you want to discuss with us privately, you can also approach us after this information session. So I think that is, that's it for the presentation. So if you have any other questions, uh, just feel free to let us know. Thank you very much again for coming all the way to follow you to attend this information session. I hope you will enjoy the remaining part of the info day here at Poly. Thank you very much.